The following four stories are about objects that had sinister effects on its owners and other objects that were cursed from the moment they were built. Haunted Animals in the Cursed Chair The following case was reported by Dr. Robert Morris, who is a parapsychologist involved with the Psychical Research Foundation of Durham in North Carolina. An experiment was carried out in a haunted house where fatal violent assaults had previously taken place. A rat, cat, dog and a rattlesnake were taken into the house in Kentucky. They took the animals into two of the rooms where the hauntings had taken place. When they took the dog into one of the rooms, it immediately snarled and then backed out of the room and when they attempted to take the dog back in, it refused to enter. They then carried the cat into the room, where it instantly crawled into the handler's shoulders and dug its claws in while at the same time spitting at the empty chair in the corner. When they took in a rat, it showed no emotion whatsoever and curiously sniffed at the chair. However, in a surprising reaction, when they took in the rattlesnake, it immediately assumed an attack posture in the direction of the empty chair. They decided to take the test further, where they took the animals into the rooms where no tragedy had occurred, and they got no reaction whatsoever. Why had these animals react in the way they did, unless some sort of emotional or paranormal imprint had been left behind? The Not-So-Lucky Statuette In 1928, C.J. Lambert and his wife en route to Manila and had stopped over in Japan, they were in the city of Kobe, and as they were walking through the city, had spotted a statuette made of ivory in a junk shop window. They entered and made inquiries, and found that it was called Ho-Ti, the Japanese god of good luck. They purchased the item for the surprisingly cheap price of less than five shillings. The following day, as they were continuing their journey to Manila, Mrs. Lambert started to suffer from an agonizing toothache that lasted for two weeks until they arrived at their destination. After visiting Manila, the next leg of the journey was by boat to Australia. As the journey was beginning, the statuette of Hoti had somehow transferred to Mr. Lambert's luggage, where he too was now suffering from a painful toothache, which lasted all the way to Brisbane in Queensland. When they arrived in Sydney, New South Wales, and the luggage had not yet arrived, his toothache stopped. But the moment the luggage reached their cabin, the toothache started again. But later, when the luggage was transferred to storage, the pain stopped. When they arrived in the United States, they gave the statuette to his mother as a gift, and a few hours later, she too suffered from a toothache. It was at this stage that after months of both suffering from a toothache, they realised the statuette was the culprit, and his mother immediately handed the gift back. They then inspected the ivory statuette and found that it was made from the base of an elephant's tusk and there was a tiny hole in the bottom where its nerve had ended. When they arrived in London, they took the ivory statuette to a Japanese art shop and described to the dealer the problems they had been having. The dealer explained that the statuette had probably come from a temple and the small statuette of gods are sometimes given souls in the form of small medallions hidden inside them. An ivory plug in the base of the figure suggested that this was the case. The dealer placed the figure of Hoti in a small shrine in the shop and that was the last time the Lambert saw the figure and their toothaches went away. But why did the figurine affect the Lamberts in such an unusual way? Could it be that they were experiencing the poor animal's death agony and that the tusk was removed while it was still alive and the pain and terror had hung around the tusk affecting whoever comes into contact with it and in this case manifesting as a toothache? The Cursed Battle Cruiser When the battle cruiser Scharnhorst was only half built, she'd rolled over, crushing 60 men. After being completed, Hitler and Goering arrived for the launching in October 1936, but the ship had somehow managed to launch itself during the night, destroying several barges. Three years later, the ship was involved in its first major engagement during the bombardment of Danzig, but a gun suddenly exploded, fatally injuring nine men. Then the air supply system broke down, suffocating 12 more men. A year later, they were in the process of bombing Oslo, when it was struck by so many shells that it had to be towed away without completing its task. One night, it was entering the River Elbe and collided with the passenger line SS Bremen, which then sank. After repairs, the Scharnhorst returned to sea and was passing a disabled British patrol boat in the dark, which then sent out an alarm signal. 
British warships then closed in and by chance fired a broadside at 16,000 yards, giving it a direct hit where she burst into flames and sank within hours. Two crew members managed to survive the sinking and reached the shore on a raft, but then perished when their oil heater exploded. James Dean's Cursed Portia James loved racing cars and lost his life in 1955 whilst driving his brand new $7,000 Porsche Spider 90 miles south of San Francisco. But that is not where it ended. The damaged vehicle was purchased by garage owner George Barris. As it was being unloaded from the breakdown truck, it slipped and broke both legs of the mechanic. The engine was sold to a doctor who then placed it into another chassis. The doctor then lost his life and the car went out of control while he was racing. In another strange twist of fate, the drive shaft from Dean's Porsche had been placed into another car during the same race where the driver was injured when his car turned over. The damaged shell of Dean's Porsche was used in a display on a highway safety in Sacramento when it suddenly fell off his mountings and broke a teenager's hip. When the same shell was en route to another display centre, the truck carrying it was involved in an accident. When the driver was thrown out of the truck, he lost his life when Dean's Porsche body rolled off the back and struck him. The racing driver who purchased the heavy-duty tyres from Dean's car almost lost his life when both tyres exploded simultaneously, causing his car to swerve off the road. George Barris could find no reason why the tyres would explode. The Bassano Vase The Bassano Vase is surrounded in darkness and was considered cursed by those who possessed it, but nobody knows why or where the curse originated. From what little is known, the vase was a simple silver design, weighing about four pounds, and was crafted sometime during the 15th century as a wedding gift. It has been listed on many websites as one of the most haunted objects known to mankind. The vase supposedly dates back to the 15th century, in a small town north of Napoli in Italy. It is believed the vase was given to a young bride on the night before her wedding, but unfortunately, the young woman tragically passed away the night before her wedding. But it is unclear how she passed, and there is little information about the bride, her family, or their names. The Pisano vase was then given to another family member, who also perished shortly after receiving it. It was then passed to another family member with the same unfortunate outcome. At this stage, the family realised that the vase was cursed, so they had it hidden away. Some say it was buried, while others it was hidden by a priest, maybe in consecrated ground. That was the last anyone heard about the vase for 400 years, until it resurfaced in 1988, where the curse would strike once more. Although there is a lack of specific detail, there is a story that it was dug up by a young man and that the vase had been buried with a note stating, Beware, this vase brings death. The note was disregarded and the vase was quickly auctioned off for $2,540 and was purchased by a pharmacist. The pharmacist passed after only three months and his family sold the vase to a doctor who passed a short time later at only 37. It was then sold to an archaeologist, and within three months, the collector too had perished of a mysterious infection. After the final fatality, the Bassana vase became unsellable, where it was said that a family member of the last victim was said to have tossed it out of a window in an attempt to break free from the curse. But the story didn't end there, when the vase apparently struck a police officer who intended to find the person who threw it at him. The family accepted a fine for littering, but refused to take the vase back. The police attempted to place the artifact in a museum, but word had already circulated about the vase being cursed and no institution would accept it. Basana vase was said to be once again reburied in an undisclosed location. The number of fatalities connected to the vase cannot be coincidental and cannot be brushed aside. There is no doubt that the vase has a negative imprint on it, one that is strong enough to last for hundreds of years. It is known that many antiques carry powerful energy, some due to an event in their past which infused them with something terrible. <laughs>